हेलो वाई वॉम वाई फॉर वॉचिंग योर ट्रेड्स ऑन इट ही नाउ दिस इज प्रियंका ओपन अलॉन्ग विथ मी स्ने डिड वी अगेन सो अनदर रिकॉर्ड लेवल्स ऑन निफ्टी एंड ऑफकोर्स सेंसेक्स ऑल्सो बट दैट वॉज द हाइस्ट पॉइंट ऑफ द डे ऑल्सो देर इन वी सॉ द द इंडेक्स ड्रैगिंग डाउन बट दैन नॉट अ मच ऑफ द लॉस यर बट दैन स्पेस इज क्लियरली विच वर गेनिंग टूडे वॉर रियल इस्टेट एफ एम सी जी आई टी कंजम्पन दे वर द बिगेस्ट गेनर्स टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड ऑन द कॉन्ट्री ऑन द फ्लिप साइड पी एस सी एनर्जी स्पेस दीज फॉर द स्पेसिस वेर द stocks were little subdued in the trade today heavyweight stocks were missing from the action today heavyweights like hdfc bank icic bank they did close in green in fact icic bank did close with a strand but then heavyweights like real uh, reliance industries uh, hdfc bank they were not uh, much they were missing from the action today actually metals made a comeback kind of you know all stocks barring hindalco all stocks closed in green today you talk about stocks like moil coil india tata steel they were in action today and the top gainers also on the nifty was coal india omcs again bpcl bharti airtel telecom stocks were again in action today hul consumption major and lti might be before the number so it pack also did made a comeback today so overall sector specific if you see it the the uh, it did was not a bad day today broader markets we saw major of the real estate stocks making a bigger move stocks like prestige godrej industries and in fact from finance side punawala finance hp sale again from the omc pack they were the major of the gainers from the mid cap lic also did saw a good move coming in from lic stock today it was up 5% and the, the buzz is that company might get a general insurance license also on the earnings front heavyweight from the auto sector bajaj auto posted good set of numbers on all front all numbers were above estimates exports revenue grew evita came in round about 4.8% So overall, a good day in trade, but anything specific that you try to say? Well, lots of factors to watch out for today. Um, you know, lots has happened in today's trade. First of all, let's talk about the markets in general. Like you mentioned, Priyanka, fresh record highs coming in from for both the Nifty and Sensex, but Sensex has reversed all of them. Nifty also barely held on to the green at the close of today's uh, session. So overall, that was what was being seen. The broader markets also flipped uh, towards the negative. Now, uh, moving on, let's talk about some other important news. pieces that we did see coming today HUL was a buzz today on the back of the news so that came um about uh, the selling of its water purification uh, business to AOS AOS Smith and that was sold at an enterprise value of uh, 600 crore rupees so uh, that was a news maker today Vedanta was the uh, one stock that had everybody's attention today on the back of that QIP that they launched uh, to uh, at a floor price of 461.26 rupees per share as well and also uh, what we are learning is that there has been an increase in the size of this QIP as well and they've upsized the share placement to 1.02 billion dollars now so there's an expansion they had this room uh, to expand and they have taken that room and they have expanded a little bit further than the initial announcement that had come so vedanta also continued to be in focus and Priyanka mentioned about Bajaj Auto from uh, but even from the non nifty pack we had a couple of earnings coming today you had Himadri Speciality very good set of numbers coming in stock reacted positively after that uh, after those numbers came out DB Corp also good set coming in Century Textiles is the one I want to talk about because uh, Nifty Realty was a top gainer today very stellar moves coming in entire Nifty uh, Realty pack was in focus but Century Textiles also stood out today on the back of two reasons first was uh, uh, they have uh, bought a 5 acre land parcel in gurugram uh, further following their um um their presence in ncr so the stock was anyway trading higher because of that and then followed by that uh, after uh, around midday you had a very good set of numbers coming in from century textiles as well you can see the sharp spike in the stock when those numbers came out and century textiles had has ended the day with a 5% uptick lots to talk about when it comes to the markets today but uh, as we head into a holiday tomorrow let's understand what we can expect from the trading session a uh, day after tomorrow especially on the back of all of these earnings and to make better sense of all of these all of these uh, cues that we've seen today we've been joined in the studio by our in house technical expert kunal bothra and kunal thanks so much for taking the time out and joining us today help us understand stand prime of ac on the markets front because we had a good open today fresh levels being inked on sensex and nifty and then a slight bit of a reversal was seen do you think this is just the budget euphoria or the caution before the budget kicking in or do you um, is this uh, the beginning of a long term uh, spell of uh, cautiousness coming in on the market no, i think there is no caution in the market mm. right now because i think the way the indices are behaving the way the market breath is shaping up i think it's just a pure indication that there is a lot of confidence in the market so you know going into the 
budget event. You know, you've seen India VIX just at 14, 14.2 levels. The last time I think we'd seen uh, the budgets or the previous uh, you know, sense of the budgets, the India VIX generally tends to hover on the 16 to 17 mark. So till the time we don't hit those levels, I don't believe that there could be any kind of a major caution which can come back into the indices. Uh, and it's been a regular phenomenon where the index tends to make a new high for itself on an intraday basis and then immediately we tend to see some uh, you know uh, pr profit booking into the indices but then gradually I think the trend just keeps on moving up higher. The good part about the market uh, in terms of the data is 24,500 mark on the put option is seeing some bit of writing, uh, incremental writing that could act as a floor or a support for the index and you know, we flagged off this in the morning as well that if there are any dips closer to 24,500 mark on intraday basis I would believe that that should be an opportunity to buy. So we maintain that same stance, maintaining the long positions uh, you know, uh, on the indices as well, as well as on the individual stocks and trail the stop losses for stocks significantly given the way the momentum is shaping up. All right, so Kunal, let's take it as a breather that markets may be consolidating. In fact, same case with banks also. There has been a good range of 1,000 odd points where they are consolidating. Mm -hmm. But then now, what lies ahead now? How would you trade? What are your recommendations here? Which counters look very strong to you? So I'll go with uh, fresh breakout candidates. LIC Housing is the first stock which uh, you know, uh, I would suggest as a buy. Looks attractive in terms of a breakout. Potential above 800 plus mark where it closed today. Targets of 850. Stop loss to be kept at 790. And the second would be a ban Godrej Properties. We saw the real estate stocks making a very strong comeback. Godrej Properties completing a flag formation on the daily charts. Puts it to survive with 3500 as a target. Stop us at 3335. All right, so Kunal, thanks for both of those picks coming in. On that note, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for sharing your view as well as your picks. But uh, viewers, let's keep it going with the technicals. And now we're being joined in our studio by my colleague Shrishti, who is here to flag off the stocks that she's liking on the technical charts. Shrishti. Well, we are here to highlight two of the breakout stocks that we spotted today. And first up, let's have a look at Alembic Pharma because though the pharma space has been holding up well, but what was interesting to see, more than 10% move coming in for Alembic Pharma in just one day, a very strong green candle from the word go. The stock only built on to its gain. And it was interesting to see that it did cross its critical uh, resistance of 1,050 odd rupees and managed to make a closing even above those levels. It was just one single day that the stock took to uh, go away with all the selling pressure all throughout. But now, if you will say that the, otherwise, the stock was actually taking support or rather trading below its key moving averages. But now it indeed gives a confidence when the stock is trading above its key moving averages and building on to the gains. But this was the first stock that we spotted on the technical front. Moving on to the next counter, very interesting one, Paramal Enterprise. Though we don't discuss uh, the stock much often, but what was interesting is that finally that stock could cross that 950 odd mark. Why I say so? Look at the charts. In the past so many times, one, two, three, four, four times the stock has actually tried to move above those levels, but every time got rejected. But today, a uh, move of more than 3% is where the stock uh, moved above those levels, 970, 980 sort of a level we have seen on Pyramid Enterprise, well supported by a long buildup. And hence, this was the second breakout stock that we spotted today. Back to you. All right, that's a good spot, uh, Srishti. Clearly, we can see the uh, breakout range uh, where you've shown us. Thanks very much for highlighting both the stocks. Um, okay, one from the pharma and one from the finance space. Um, uh, moving on, uh, let's get your word from the wise. Even as large cap banks drive the bulls on the, uh, the Lal Street, Quant Mutual Fund Sandeep Tandon believes there is a caution to be exercised when it comes to these names. Additionally, he also maintains a constructive stance on the PSU space. Let's hear out what is his rationale behind all that. We have been quite cautious, okay, on the private sector bank for last, not only for last few months, it has been for last many quarters. And we have talked about, because we believe the leverage economy as a concept is declining. You ask me next next few decades, whether banks as a sector, which is 40% of the index today, and if banks exist in this form, whether the weightage will remain, the answer is big no, okay. Uh, yes, I also believe that banks will also change accordingly because the way we're looking at the uh, the digital currency sort of thing or central bank digital currency thing or and some of the changes which is happening globally, we believe bank will not exist in this form and hence the derating process. And I also believe the weightage which if you have seen of 40% will not be there in the next 30 years or 20 years, this sort of weightage. So from that perspective, we have been extremely cautious. I'm not saying I'm being negative on the banking asset space. You can't be negative because the, given the economy interest, which is there and valuations have corrected. Again, it's a relative word. It has corrected a lot. 
but again it's a very theoretical exercise whether these valuations are expensive or not that as compared to globally they are still very expensive is still over ownership is there we remain very cautious on this space and pcus were relatively cheap they are fairly liquid if i want to exit or build a position in any of the pcu the liquidity is extraordinary so which was not the case few years back so i will like to play this thesis when that's the reason we went overboard and build a large exposure or maintain our large exposure towards this space because they are fairly liquid fairly attractive in terms of valuation point of view impact cost was on lower side and they were trading in the neglected territory All right, that's the word coming in from Sandeep Tandon of Quant MF. Um, cautious on banks, but continues to like the PSU space. But on that note, viewers, we'll slip into a very short break on this edition of Your Trades. We'll be right back with more news and updates. Stay tuned. All right, now let's get your action from the derivative space. FIs long short ratio is constant uh, with FIs of at a 20-80 percent to 20 percent on the short side. But then India VIX is above for 14; it's 14.3. But the trend has little shifted uh, for Bank Nifty. Now the trend, which appears uh, in today's trend, is that long unwinding. But then uh, Nifty all trades as a flat trend. The active calls, which are uh, active for 18 July expiry, was 24,700, 24,800. These there were the call writing which happened. That is the reason we could saw we could see some kind of Pressure coming in at the high levels, and Nifty could not sustain those levels. But then there seems to be a good cushion, good support at twenty four thousand five hundred, twenty four thousand four hundred, where the maximum of the put writing has also has happened. So looks like maybe we could be in for a consolidated, a small range of trade. Snehi from here. Hmm, absolutely, Priyanka. Range is looking rather tight and narrow as of now. But like Kunal said, he's not seeing any reason to worry. So let's just hold on and see what happens leading up to the budget. But let's just focus talk about the big story of the day and rather. the stock of the day to watch out for today was HUL and HUL was in focus after the FMCG major sold its water purification business Purit to AO Smith Vinny Motiwala is joining us with all of those details about what this deal looks like and how this is going to benefit both of these companies Vinny Yes, talking about HUL, they've sold their water purification business Purit uh, to AO Smith. Now the uh, sales that you look at it for Purit in FI24 was at around 293 crores. And when you're looking at it, the valuation which they've sold, it's two times EV to sales valuation. Um, overall, uh, the they've sold it for a value of 600 crores. So keeping an eye out on that, the EV to sales is two times. Now, other than that, when you're looking at it, you know Purit as a part of HUL's business, uh, the sales have only been less than 1% of overall HUL turnover the company has spoken about how they want to focus more on their core strategies and this is in line with that expectation so the management commentary also highlights that you know this is in line with the focus or uh, the strategy to focus more on their core categories uh, what analysts believe that you know given the water purification business that's quite uh, competitive there is low product differentiation and uh, to be a price disruptor also it becomes quite tough in such a highly competitive market so yes um, you know what they Believe that for HUL it is slight bit of a positive. UBS continues to maintain their rating. Novama said that they see marginal positive up move that is possible for HUL as well as they are maintaining their buy rating for the stock. This transaction would be completed in a time period of three months. So keeping an eye on this one. This uh, news seems to be moving for HUL up to one and a half percent. Thanks, Vinny, for all that, all those details. Now shifting focus to an Economic Times report that says that states may soon allow home delivery of liquor through. quick commerce platforms the likes of zomato swiggy and big basket let's go across to somit to understand more on this well uh, economic times has reported this that multiple states are mulling home delivery of liquor through quick commerce now uh, the states that may allow home delivery of liquor uh, include the list of uh, new delhi karnataka haryana punjab Tamil Nadu, Goa, and Kerala. Now, if you look, uh, if you, uh, now if you remember back uh, during the COVID times, also if you, uh, Zomato and Swiggy both had tried to enter this uh, market when there was uh, lockdown. However, eventually they had to exit this market due to high cash burn and the lack of scalability. Now, again, states have started to mull this. And if you look at the alcohol consumption market in India, it stands at around 60 billion US dollars, and nearly uh, 40% of the consumption comes from the states that we just mentioned. That is New Delhi, Karnataka, Haryana. Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Goa, and Kerala. So, if uh, these states go ahead and uh, impl- uh, implement uh, this uh, regulation, then it could be a big market for Zomato's uh, subsidiary, which is Blinkit, which is into uh, quick commerce. Now, analysts believe that the unit economics have changed now than what it was earlier during the lockdown period, and liquor delivery 
could achieve scale in tier one cities at least uh, for quick commerce companies like uh, Blinkit. And uh, analysts are expecting that if uh, at all Blinkit enters this market, uh, then uh, they, uh, then their uh, gross order value could see a bump up of at least five odd percent, and that is because the entire Indian market is around sixty billion US dollars. Forty percent of that is these states, and if you assume that Blinkit um, garners around thirty three percent market share, which currently it has when it comes to quick commerce business, then the uh, gross order value or the market share of Blinkit uh, could be around 79 million US dollars, which is nearly 5% of their current gross order value. So this could be a new market for Blinkit uh, going forward. However, we still do not know when uh, about the timelines and what are the regular, uh, uh, legalities that the company might have to uh, comply with uh, to go ahead for this service. But if it starts, then the gross order value could see a bump off of at least 5% going forward. All right, Swami, thanks for all of those details coming in Zomato and Focus because it was down 5% today. Now, time now for some excerpts of our chat with uh, Vishesh Srivastav, MD India Investments at Temasek Holdings. Listen into what makes Temasek bullish on India's startup space. I think a lot of the startups, not just Zomato, are now at a point where they have become sustainable businesses. They have started generating profits and so they can keep continue they can keep to continue to fulfill their mission without depending on external capital right and this i think is a is a very good inflection point for you know specific companies but the ecosystem as a whole um, you know the the thing about uh, about when habits change is that you know there's there's a famous saying that we always overestimate the short term but we always underestimate the long term and we believe that there's a lot of penetration headroom yet to come uh, and and you know the the capabilities that companies build in this journey uh, will help them execute on the next big opportunity. So we believe that investing in early stage companies, when done you know in the right manner, leads to so many other benefits, not just for investors but for the ecosystem as a whole. And right. and we believe that India is at the cusp of of beginning to realize some of those benefits now, not just in our companies but in the ecosystem. It's, uh, some more bullish comments coming in now for at least India's growth story. But then let's go ahead and let's uh, understand uh, how the numbers look like for Bajaj Auto. Let's tell a quarter from Bajaj Auto as it surpasses 18 hour estimates also on all fronts. The company saw a 10% uptick in its net income on a y on y basis. Revenue was uh, over 15% uh, up, uh, wherein the exports revenue saw a double digit growth. Compared with the uh, same time last year, my colleague uh, Srishti is here to share more details on those quarterly numbers. Uh, Srishti, share your observations. Well, indeed, a good set coming in from Bajaj Auto. The, all the numbers were actually above than what we were expecting at ET now, and especially the margin figure. Once again, the margins are above 20% and 20.3% is what the company has clocked in. And even on the profit uh, number, 1988 crores is what the company has reported. What we have seen is that the domestic volumes were supportive enough. The export have seen a gradual recovery. And this time, the company did mention that the export revenue grew double digit on a YY basis with LATAM clocking its highest ever revenue. Venue, and there was an uptick seen in the Asian markets as well. The consistent growth in the market share over time has held led the LATAM emerging market as the largest region for this particular quarter. So that uh, the LATAM uh, area was one of the growth engines for the company. But uh, apart from that, if we talk about their Brazil facility, uh, one of the new facilities that the company has added. So the facility has been commissioned with an annual capacity of 20,000 units in the quarter gone by. But when it comes to their uh, product expansion, plans as well then definitely for Bajaj uh, Chetak the company was on the expansion spree for their uh, distributions and the dealers network and the company did say that their network has been expanded to 500 stores by the quarter end very near to the target that the company did set for Q1 apart from that when it comes to their triumph then the, the delivery of that was actually 19,000 units in Q1 which is a strong number and the company is looking to expand its dealership to 150 in the in coming months was his 100 showrooms now so all in all a good set by Bajaj Auto and indeed the stock also saw a good move All right, all, all 
eyes are going to be on the big event that's just next week and that's the union budget. Let's move on to a new budget exclusive story. The government is expected to continue with the CapEx target that was announced in the interim budget. My colleague Prakash is here with all of those exclusive details. Prakash, take it away. Yes, sir. We have been informed that the no major changes are expected in the capital expenditure target, the forthcoming union budget. Sources are informing that the government is likely to continue the CAPEX target announced in the interim budget. Some minor tweaks are expected based on the ministry's demand. As you are aware that the government has allocated rupees 11.11 lakh crore uh, CAPEX target uh, in the interim budget, which is likely to be continued. Some key sectors like uh, agriculture, rural development, uh, uh, railways, housing, road transport and highways will continue to get high allocation. Along with that, the sources are also informing that the, despite high allocation to some key sectors, the government will maintain the fiscal discipline roadmap uh, in the budget. The fiscal deficit target to be, uh, to be retained at 5.1% for the financial year 2025 in line with the interim budget. And the government will stick to the uh, fiscal roadmap to achieve 4.5% defi uh, deficit target uh, by the financial year 2026. All right. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Prakash, for all those exclusive uh, detail on the budget uh, story. That happens to be the big story for the moment. Well, all, that's all in this edition of Your Trades. It's a truncated week. Uh, we see you on Thursday now.